components 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 of cost of capital how to calculate the components of cost of capital remember capital the capital structure will involve the equity as I've just mentioned, we may also have preferred stock or preference, uh, share capital, and debt. Preference stock or preferred stock is a form of um, capital, is a source of capital. Equity is a source of capital. Debt is a source of capital. So these are components of capital. We need to learn how to calculate the cost of equity, which may be abbreviated as KE, and the cost of preference shares, which you can abbreviate as um, KP, and the cost of debt, we can abbreviate it as KD. So we need to learn how to determine or how to calculate cost of each component in the company's capital structure. So in the structure of the company, we may have equity, preference stock, or debt. So in our today's lesson, we'll be looking at the determination or calculation of various components of capital, components of capital. So we start with the equity. Equity. How do you determine the cost of equity? How do you determine the cost of equity? Equity can be determined or can be looked at from two perspectives, okay? Or can be determined with respect to zero growth firm and constant growth firm. Zero growth firm. zero growth firm zero growth firms and constant constant growth firms now as the name suggests a zero growth firm is a firm whose um, dividend per share does not grow there is zero growth there is no growth okay the dividend per share year after year does not change it's zero so so that if year one the dividend per share is say 10 shillings per share then it will be remain the same for year two at 10 shillings per share. There is no growth, it's not growing, it's not growing. It's constantly at zero, zero growth, there is no growth. Then the cost of equity can also be determined for the cost, for the constant growth farms. Constant growth farm. This is a farm where the dividend per share is growing at a constant rate. For example, we may talk of 10%. 10% every year. There is a, 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 a constant growth in dividend per share at the rate of 10% every year. So it's constantly growing at the rate of 10%. The first category of farm is where there is zero growth farm. There is no growth at all. There is no growth at all. So what is the cost of equity? for a zero growth firm. Now, the cost of equity for a zero growth firm can be determined as follows. KE, which is cost of equity, equal to D1 over, over PO times 100. 
that is the formula for a, Z, a zero growth firm where where d1 is equal to the expected expected dividend per share and po is the market price per share market price per share the prevailing market price per share then we multiply by 100 to get a percentage so that is how you determine the cost of equity for a zero growth farm zero growth farm that is the formula for a zero growth farm and it's quite simple because this information is you are given the dividend uh, price per share expected uh, price per share and the market price the prevailing market price per share if it is um, a listed company this is the market price at this at the exchange so that is number one the other category of farm we have said is number two a farm that is growing at a constant growth uh, constant rate constant constant growth farm so what will be the dividend what will be the cost of equity for such a farm the cost of equity will be equal to d1 over p naught plus g plus g times 100 convert that into percent where d1 is equal to the expected dividend which may also be equal to d naught times 1 plus g which we are saying is equal to the expected expected dividend per share All right d1 is the expected dividend per share expected dividend per share so the formula for expected dividend per share depending on the information that you have given if you are appearing in exams you may not be provided with the expected dividend per share but you can be provided by the current dividend okay where d1 is equal to the current dividend which is denoted as do into one plus g so d naught is the current dividend you multiply by this factor to arrive at d1 which is the expected dividend per share and p naught is equal to the market price per share market price per share now where a farm incurs flotation costs remember in our introduction we talked about implicit costs this is the cost that is incurred in the process of obtaining capital we talked of brokerage fees legal fees uh, auditing fees and so on where we have the flotation costs or implicit costs then we'll have an adjustment to this formula we will deduct the flotation costs from the market price per share so we have our fc there where fc is equal to the flotation flotation cost per share fc is the flotation cost per share so in the event that a company incurs flotation cost then that flotation cost should be deducted from the market price per share so that is how to determine the cost of equity and ke is the cost of equity cost of equity so this is the formula for the constant growth farm 
and of course G is equal to the growth rate. Growth rate, because remember we are talking about constant growth farm. So if a company is growing at a constant rate, then we'll add G, which is the growth rate. The growth rate it may be expressed as a percentage. So that's how you determine the cost of equity, which is a component of cost of capital. So that is the formula. Then the formula for equity. We have zero growth firm, constant growth firm. Number B is the cost of preference. Preference share capital. Cost of preference share capital denoted as KP should be equal to um, DP DP over over P D or P naught just have it as P naught times 100 convert that into the into percentage where where DP is equal to dividend per share. This DP is the expected dividend per share and P naught is the market price per share for the preferred stock. So then you multiply that by 100. So that is the formula for the preferred stock or the preference share capital. Preference share capital. So that is the second component. That component one is the equity. Component two, preference share capital equity here or the ordinary share capital. This equity ordinary share capital. Ordinary share capital. Then we can look at the third element. The third element is the cost of debt. The cost of debt the cost of debt or debentures. So the cost of debt or debentures. Remember we said debt represents money brought in by parties other than the owners. Parties other than the owners. Cost of debt or debentures. Now Debenture holders, we say, and again to repeat, we say that debt will involve or include the loans, long-term loans or long-term loans or stock or debentures or bonds. So these bonds, the cost that the company pays, the price that the company pays will be in form of interest. So interest is paid on debt. But as for the equity and preference share capital, the cost is dividend. The dividend is the cost. But for debt, the cost is interest. So when analyzing debt, there are two categories of debt or debentures. Number one is the Irredeemable, irredeemable, irredeemable debt or debentures. Then number two, we have the redeemable, redeemable debt or debentures. Now the irredeemable debentures, these are also known as 
perpetual, perpetual debentures. These debentures remain in the business until liquidation. But for the redeemable debentures, these are debentures which may be redeemed or may be bought back. They have a period. They have a period of say five years or 10 years or 20 years. So after 20 years, the debt will be redeemed. The company will give the debt holders, the venture holders back their money. And uh, in that case, we say those are redeemable debentures. But for the irredeemable debt, the redeemable debt, this debt is perpetual. The debt is not bought back, it's not redeemed. So the formula for redeemable, redeemable debentures is different from that of the irredeemable debentures. So number one, irredeemable debentures, irredeemable Irredeemable for the redeemable debt. The cost of irredeemable debt, KD, will be equal to interest over VD 1 minus T. Times 100. Okay, so it will be the interest over where int is equal to the interest per debenture VD is equal to the market value market value per debenture market value per debenture t is the corporation tax prevailing corporation tax t is the corporation tax vd is the market price per debenture and int is the interest per debenture Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.